And the, and the moral of the story is, don't us. play. Yeah. Work your butt off. Let the world have internet. From balloons, Google's Project Loon. What is it? How will it work? Will it work? What are the challenges? I'm Callie Lewis. Welcome to Geek Beats. This episode of Geeky TV is brought to you by Carbonite. Google's latest attempt at solving the world's problems is called Project Loon, and even though it's been in the works for two years, begun by a guy named Rich Duvall, they're just now talking about it. Basically, Google wants to create a network in the sky. You and I are online all the time. We even have mobile devices that allow us to carry the internet with us wherever we go. But according to the latest calculations, for every person on Earth who has access to fast, affordable internet, there are two people who don't. So Rich and other Googlers began looking for solutions in various creative ways, out of the ordinary, and created a solar-powered balloon that would provide internet to areas where internet was hard to come by, whether that's because of mountains or jungles or just pure cost. Did you know some people would be looking at a cost of over a month's pay just to get online? Whew. This balloon is 65 feet in diameter, is meant to fly above commercial air flight zones. It actually is meant to fly in the stratosphere. You know, that place that Felix Baumgartner did a skydive from recently? So the balloons will be 60,000 feet above sea level. But here's the thing, because of the way the wind flows in the stratosphere, they can control the balloons in a way they can't in normal air using just wind and solar power. They can move a particular balloon in and out of airstreams at will and beam internet access that equals about 3G speeds may be faster down to the earth. What are those balloons way up there connecting to, though? Well, there are multiple antennas on the ground that look like small red balloons. In an effort to put this theory of providing internet faster and cheaper, they just launched 30 balloons in a week and had 50 people in New Zealand, specifically the Canterbury area, attempt to connect to the balloons. This was the biggest simultaneous connection test so far, and they say we still have a long way to go. I get the feeling it didn't go quite like planned or hoped, but there was a degree of success. So what are the remaining issues and challenges? Well, lots, <laughs> but to begin with, does each person who wants to connect need one of these antennas, or will one antenna serve multiple people? What's the plan on getting those distributed? How much will they cost? Number two, as I understand it, given the information we have, Google has to drive the balloons to where they're needed. How will they know where the balloons are needed? Will cities have to apply for access? How labor intensive is that process of moving the balloons? How sustainable is the workload? Can it be automated? Also, how does Google set priorities when dealing with a limited number of balloons? Who gets it first? Another question, the balloons are constantly on the move. So how long does a particular community have access? Is it a fleeting thing? or a sustainable thing? How far and wide can the signal reach? In order for people to have constant access, they need to have a lot of balloons up there with the signal drop and come back on. How does that all work? Do we want to fill the stratosphere with them? And by the way, who has say over what's in the stratosphere? Is it the country below that particular space? Does Google have to get permission from someone? Are there any legal parameters for this? That one I'm not clear on. Maybe some of you have answers. If so, let me know. Now, the last question on everyone's mind is, is it named Project Loon because of the balloon? or because it's a loony idea. Google has hinted at the latter. Regardless of the name, it's a long way off from becoming a complete reality and reaching its ultimate goal of balloon-powered internet for everyone. But it's certainly a very interesting idea, and I'll be following its progress. Of course, Google benefits financially from reaching more people, right? But even so, it's an effort worth making. I love hearing from all of our viewers in locations I never thought would be watching us, like Algeria, for instance. Rami. <laughs> I look forward to meeting more people from remote areas online in the future. Speaking of data in the clouds, you need to be keeping a backup of all your data in the cloud. Carbonite.com makes it easy to keep your precious files backed up automatically. And when your balloon pops, and by that I mean when your drive fails, you'll be so glad you did it. It happens to everyone, it's just a matter of time. But don't worry, because you'll be able to easily restore those files once you've replaced your drive. Go to Carbonite.com and use the offer code GeekBeat to get a free trial and two bonus months. So what do you think of Project Loon's goals and the attempts made so far? Do you think it's a bust or our future? Let me know, leave a comment below, and be sure you're subscribed either on youtube.com slash kbtv, iTunes, or even motube.us slash kbtv. I'm Callie Lewis. Bye. I'm getting my carbonizion.
You know, that place that's... <laughs> Celix Bumsgartner? You know, that place that Felix Bumgartner's dust. <laughs> Can't say this sentence! <laughs>